Thank you very much. Good morning. I'm going to try to be very, very brief. As you know, my name is Matthew Eugene, and I'm the New York City Council member representing District 40. That means the district where this uh, remarkable medical center is located. I'm so fortunate and blessed to be able to serve this district. Let me take the opportunity first uh, to commend and thank the visionaries, the people who had the vision and the idea to create this center. And especially my friend, Chapsi, because when he started, when he had the, the idea, he called me and said, Matthew, I see great need in the community. And I want to make sure I create something to fulfill those needs. He was talking about the health disparity in the community. And he said that he believed that working together with doctors in the community, with other leaders in the community, he would be able to create something that will serve the needs of the community. And today, I'm so pleased, so delighted to, he to be here and to see this become a reality. One thing that I want to say that I'm sure that this uh, medical center is going to provide remarkable medical care, medical services to my constituents and to the people in Brooklyn and the people in uh, New York City. And I want to call to join me two brilliant doctors, physicians that I know personally, and I know who they are and the wonderful track record that they have in serving our people. And I want to call Dr. Kenizan, please, and Dr. Valerie, please. Another person that I want to call to join us also is a very strong, very dedicated public servant. The chairman of Community Board 9, Musa Moore. I call those three people. I know there are many other and very important leaders in the community who are probably in, the, in attendance today. But just to remind you by working together, we got the chairman of the community board, Nye, the doctors, and myself as a, an elected official. We're going to work together to make sure this become a very successful clinic. I have to go, but before I go, I want to let you know that I'm a very strong supporter of health. If you go to the internet, if you go to the city council, you will see that I've been fighting since I got elected for the city of New York to provide the resources that our medical centers, hospital needs to provide the best quality care to our people. And again, to all of you who have been part of this, uh, who are part of this uh, creator center, from the bottom of my heart, and also on behalf of the people in the community, thank you, thank you very much. And I will be here working with you, and whatever I can do, I will be more than happy to collaborate with you and to help you do your job properly and do what you love doing, especially the doctors, serving the people, taking care of the people. Let me conclude by saying that. Health is the most precious gift that we receive from God. I love saying that all the time. It doesn't matter how much money that you have. It doesn't matter how much power you believe that you have. Nobody get power, only God get power. And it doesn't matter how beautiful you believe you are. If you don't have health, forget about it. Nothing comes. That's the reason why this center is so important. We have to make sure that our people, our citizens are healthy in order for them to be able to continue to work to sustain the families and also to contribute to the society to pay taxes in order for government to be able to render services to the other citizens. And again, to all of you, thank you so very much. I got to run because this morning I got to share a public hearing on the fiscal year 2018 budget of the city of New York. I'm the chair of the Youth Services Committee and I see so many young people here. I got to go to the city council to fight for the budget for them because they need so much job. They need after school program and they need also funding for the school in order for the school to give them the best education possible. Thank you very much and God bless you. Thank you.
Thank you very much, uh, Shreya Ferreras Copeland. And good afternoon. I'm Councilmember Matthew Eugene, Chair of the Committee of Youth Services. And I would like to join my colleague in welcoming you, all of you, to this oversight hearing of the OSCD Fiscal 2018 Executive Budget. The Fiscal 2018 Executive Budget for DYCD totaled 679.8 million. This includes 15.6 million in minimum wage increases of the Summer Youth Employment Program, but only for one year. And it includes 10.7 million for 3,600 more after school slack for middle school students in Sunny, but only during the school year. Frankly, this budget does not do justice to the need of, of interest of New York City. Like Chair Ferris Copeland and my colleagues on the Council, I felt disappointed that the administration has failed to better meet the demand for jobs in Soviet Youth Employment Program. SYEP served many very important purposes in New York City. SYEP not only helped young people earn money, but it gives them job training and keep them safe. It gives employers because the five goals, extra staff during the summer month, and it helps support our city's economy. New York needs this program. Nearly 140,000 applications last year only underscore the need for the program. And that is the reason why the council continues to push for 15,000 more SYP jobs for this year. I'm also very concerned about the lack of attention on the executive budget to services for disconnected youth. The council has recently passed legislation to address this, establishing a disconnected youth task force that will meet every two years to review programming and make the recommendation. I look forward to the work of the new task force, but I'm concerned about what services will be available in the meantime. I do not, I do not want our city's young people who desperately need jobs and education to have to wait another year before they see any real changes. As a city, we must be better than that. Before we begin, I would like to thank my legislative and budget director, Ethan Tucker, and the staff of the Youth Committee, Jessica Akemen, Senior Finance Analyst, and Kiu Dishugu, Committee Council, and Michael Benjamin, our Senior Policy Analyst. Thank you. 
So uh, OMB is fully aware of the schedule of minimum wage increases, so we've been given assurances that that will be added. The big open question is what the cost of the new models will be. And that we haven't quite figured out yet. And that will be reflected in the RFP that's released uh, this fall. And so uh, when we know how much administering the program will cost, the fixed uh, cost related to the minimum wage will be added. That's what I need to learn about the task force. Uh, we don't have to the recommendation of the task force. We also have a task force. And the task force needs certain recommendations. Some of them are going to be observed and the board of the Particularly about the, 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 the special application.
connect and work working together. So we're, we have uh, work groups of our city staff, those who may work with homeless youth programs and those that work with out of school youth programs. They're often the same young person. And how do we begin to build on the resources where we have to do a better job? And we've had conversations with the small business services about how do we do handoffs with young people who exit our programs into their programs because they serve anyone who's 18 and over. So I think you can't do enough coordination about women. I have someone who's worked in four different administrations. I, I see one of the biggest challenges, besides money obviously, is how do we better coordinate what we have? And it's, it's, it's frustrating at times to see that we're not really maximizing that. So we we look forward to work with the task force. What are the issues that are really going to be there? We would share our experiences in the last three years as to those practices of how, you know, instead of looking at, at people as individual program participants, look at them as old people, understanding that a young person who might be homeless while you're providing uh, housing and that they also need a new job. And they may need other types of services. So I think we take a much more holistic approach to the people we serve rather than looking at uh, separate silo programs. So yeah, you say that you need, but uh Right. Well, we are at NYCD, but you know, I don't, I'm not uh, responsible for all the other agencies, so that's why the task force, which the mayor's office will take the lead in the pointing shippers and will take on a larger role outside of what you see. I can control what we do at NYCD, and that's why three years ago we convened all the different programs that we currently fund, we got strategies on how to do better work together. But I agree with you that we need a larger strategy, and that, that's something that I don't necessarily. Uh, I can't tell SDS what to do. Uh, we can reach out and coordinate, and that's why the task force that provides a forum to have those conversations. Thank you very much, Mr. I will be back some more questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think as you were right, when you were talking, you mentioned that uh, the part of COVA, the 50 youth, could you please elaborate on that? The part of COVA for 50 youth, and uh, how are you going to do Correct. So I spoke about four separate panels before, um, and two of them have 50 young people participating this summer. There's one around one of you. For this one, I you I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead, there's one for one of you, and there's one for young people who worked last year, who's actually guaranteed a job with the same people already this year. Okay. So those are the two panels that I referred to before. Mm -hmm. So what about the what about the vulnerable you, the disconnected you? So the vulnerable, well, we don't we don't define vulnerable youth as disconnected youth. So vulnerable for those young people who are in the foster care system, they're justice involved, they're runaway homeless, or receiving preventive services from BCS. Yes, there's a pile for those young people as well. Fifty young people will be engaged in community service, project-based learning this summer, and they're going to start working on the first day of SYP, which is July fifth all the way through August for six weeks. And are they going to be included? The providers will do a deep assessment once they come in. They're going to sit and talk to that young person to see exactly if they're work ready or not. And if they're deemed work ready in their place at a regular work site, if not, they're going to be placed in this community service project pilot. We know that the state budget uh, approved the extension, the scope extension for services for the only way uh, on this youth. How many under this uh, extension, how many young people you will be served? Or is there any so you reference to the vulnerable youth option? No, I'm talking about the only way of this youth. So within SYP, there's 3,000 slots at the side of vulnerable youth, and some of those young people are running in all this youth. So your question is how many of those? But what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the expansion to the uh, young people to 24 years instead of 22 years. Oh, this is okay. So, if you take advantage of the, the, that example. Oh, when you talk about the runaway homeless youth, this yeah, change in the state law. Uh, okay. 20, 20, so, so, let me, let me start. 24 and 24 will be served. 
Okay, so uh, let me give you some context so everyone knows what we're talking about. Um, so for many years, the definition by the state of runaway and homeless youth was 16 to 21. So in the budget adopted by the state uh, about a month ago, they allowed for each local youth bureau to raise the age from 21 to 24 as an option. Uh, the law does not take effect until January of next year, and we're, so no decision has been made on whether to add services for homeless youth between 21 to 24 until the regulations are uh, issued by the state, because that will determine what the model will look like and what the cost will be. But what the city is doing separately from, from, uh, from whether to add youth services for 21 to 24 year olds is three things. One, as you may know, uh, the Department of Homeless Services opened up the first shelter for homeless gay youth 21 and older up in the Bronx, actually in Councilman Torres' district. And I had a chance to thank him when I saw him the other day because he actually welcomed and encouraged the Department of Homeless Services to uh, open this shelter. We worked with Project Renewal, which sponsors that program, uh, gets funded by the, homeless services, the Department of Homeless Services, and we've developed a strategy to refer young people who age out of our programs so they can go there. And the feedback I've gotten from people who've referred young people there has been very positive. The second thing we're doing to address the needs of young people between 21 and 24 is, as you know, the state released about a billion dollars for supportive housing. And so we're working closely with HRA for the first time to be part of the conversation so that some of the new units that are built uh, through supportive housing serve young people between the ages of 21 and 24. And the third thing we're doing is for young people who age out at 21 and are able to live independently, uh, we're working with HRA to streamline the application process for rental assistance vouchers because um, right now it's uh, not easily accessible to young people. And so we think those three things uh, will help uh, expand services for young people who are homeless between the ages of 21 and 24. Thank you, Mark. That's my my question. Thank you, Madam Chair. And this is a very important topic. Everybody is talking about the American dream. What is the American dream? Have a piece of poker. This is very important. As you said, this is a serious business. I'm saying that because I'm a, I'm an owner also. <laughs> so I mean, I, I'm privileged and blessed, you know, to have some property. But it is a serious business. Now it is more difficult, mm -hmm. especially for us. You know that, especially for us. So when you go to that business, make sure you got a great organization like NHS, FDC, and actually people can guide you. If you don't have that, forget about it. Just imagine, you work hard all your life to save some money. And you say, now I got to get a piece of the cake. If you don't have the right decision, you don't make the right decision, you, have, you don't have people to guide you, forget about it. It's going to be a bad mouth. And uh, I will encourage all of you. If you got some money, don't buy magical cars, beautiful cars, expensive cars. I want to change the living home, the bed. No, 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 no. Think about getting a piece of, of America that you benefit your, benefit your children. Because rent right now is so expensive. If you can save your money, buy a house, believe it or not, this is the best thing you will be able to do in your life. Thank you for being here. My name is Matthew Eugene. I'm the New York City Council member representing District 40, this district where you are now. I'm a partner with all this wonderful organization and wonderful people who are providing good services to the community. Let me finish by saying that. Right now, the situation that we are in is very critical. New York City is not the same place anymore. Those who are of my generation or older or quite younger may understand that. United States is not the same country anymore. Before it was bad. I don't say it's bad, but we need to make more sacrifices and work harder. So I'm telling you, the only way we can prevent and continue to survive is by working together. Not working against each other. It doesn't matter where you come from. From Barbados, Jamaica, Haiti, born in the United States, it doesn't matter. 
how are we going to come together to survive? Because right now, life in New York City is very difficult. We have to do it for ourselves, we have to do it for our children. We have to start thinking how our children are going to survive. I'm not talking about child politics, I'm talking about needs, community needs. I'm talking about you know, improving the quality of life of people. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you, to all of you from NHS and uh, FDC, my friends, and thank you very much for what you're doing. Because government alone cannot better the community, possible. Government alone cannot help the people. We need great organizations like those too. Thank you much for the blessing. Thank you. It is great honor and pleasure for me to be here today just to thank the community that organized the health fair and also all of you who are here today to provide critical services and information to our brothers and sisters. Because we all know that health is the most important gift that we can receive from God. And I'm saying that not only from, as a patient, because we are all patients, and I'm saying that as a medical doctor myself. So to all of you who are here to provide good information and services free to the people, on my behalf, on behalf of the great city of New York, on behalf of the community, thank you, thank you very much. And I want you to put your head together for one of the very dedicated the leader and servant of the community, you said the one who has been always working hard to make a lady of what you look good. Thank you very much. Council member Matthew Eugene, in collaboration with Public School 249 and New York City Parks, presents Family Fun Day on Saturday, May 20th, from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. Free admission. Family Fun Day includes rides, arts and crafts, music, face painting, games, and much more. PS 249 is located at 18 Marlboro Road, Brooklyn, New York, 11226. Use the entrance to the schoolyard on Rugby Road. For further information, please contact the office of Councilmember Matthew Jean at 718-287-8762 or at cmugeneevents at gmail.com.